Hello everyone. I'm back for a long video. You can tell because I have the mic. Um, I made this video yesterday and I thought that I didn't put my back into it and I could do it better. So I'm making it again today. Um, I've got a lot of comments saying like, oh, this is great. It's kind of like a podcast or something like that. And I was like, why don't I just lean into that? So if you want to just click off and just listen to this, um, I won't be showing you um, the fr my fragr favorite fragrances that I currently own until the second half of the video and I will be putting like the timestamp in the description. So if you're just here for recommendations and you don't want to learn just basic facts about um, fragrance, then you can skip to the where I start talking about my favorite perfume. But I'm going to start with a little bit of a background because this is like one of my favorite things. Um, I always say to Alex that like my dream job would just be to be dropped off um, at some fancy department store and to be the person that helps people find the perfume that they want because I, I just like, I research it so much. I know like a lot of how things... I, it's just a special interest of mine. I spend a lot of time on Fragrantica, um, which is like a website that uh, it just has information on fragrances and their notes and like who designed them um, and all that stuff. So I really love that website for looking up perfumes. Um, but yeah, I figured perfume can get expensive and I really think that if you're going to be spending money on something, then... Um, you should know what you're spending money on. So I'm going to do a little breakdown of different types of perfumes, roughly the origins of some stuff. Um, but yeah, if you would like to learn more about fragrance, if you don't know very much, um, get a snack, get something to drink, settle in. This is going to be not very long, but I'm just going to, you know, talk, which usually takes a while. So, um, First, I wanted to talk about the different types of fragrance. So um, what's in your fragrance is perfume oil uh, and then a certain percentage of alcohol. Um, and alcohol helps preserve it, but also thins it out so that you can spray it on yourself. Perfumes come in different concentrations of this perfume oil. So um, parfum, parfum, parfum. Parf Parfum? I don't know how to say it, but I don't want to say it perfume because that's wrong. I know that's wrong. Um, but anyway, um, some places will sell, I think Chanel does, um, sell a, just a parfum. I can't say it. I get to, or whatever. Okay. Parfum. Uh, Chanel does sell this and they usually come in teeny tiny little bottles, uh, and they are, 20 to 40 percent fragrance oil so these are usually more expensive but the lasting power of it is much longer and you need much less than you typically would of something of lesser concentration um but not many fragrance companies makes these little make these little uh oil things um chanel does i don't really know what other ones do i haven't looked for them i usually am not um I don't want my fragrance to have that long of staying power I because I change and I'd like to wear something different. So I've never really purchased um, like a true parfum, if that's how you say it. Um, but uh, the one step down from that is a eau de parfum, which is... Um, I'm, gonna, I'm getting so caught up with how I'm saying this and it's embarrassing. I feel like I'm in French. So the next step down in concentration and in price most of the time um, is an eau de parfum, which is water of perfume. It's more watery, um, I believe. <laughs> Watch me be wrong about that. Um, uh, that is 15 to 20% fragrance oil. So you're going to get pretty good staying power from that. Those are more common in like your Sephora and Ulta. You can find quite a few of those. Um, down one from that is an eau de toilette, which is usually 5 to 15% fragrance oils. That's like usually kind of your standard um, perfume. Most things come in an eau de toilette. And I didn't know this until I really started researching that cologne is actually not, well, I kind of knew this, but I didn't know for sure. Cologne is not men's perfume. It's a concentration of 
perfume oils. So it's a bit of a lighter spray. So a cologne has between 2 and 5% fragrance oil. And then below that, a splash or like an eau fresh uh, would be 1 to 3% perfume oil. But instead of extra alcohol being added in to make up for that, it's water. So it's a little bit of like a fresher, lighter fragrance. Um, so those are kind of like the categories of perfumes and why they're categorized like that. All it is is the concentration of the perfume oil that is present in your fragrance. And the more oil you have, the longer lasting, the stronger usually um, something is. Personally, usually like to go pretty middle ground with that, but it depends on the fragrance because sometimes the notes can change depending on the concentration of um, the perfume in because everything is just it's all about balance and how you perceive things so fragrance is very personal um, it's very um, it really depends on your skin chemistry like things may smell different on you than they smell on other people it's possible that there might be a fragrance that you love the smell of on the bot in, like in the bottle or on a piece of like paper tester that they give you but then when you put it on yourself you're like this does not smell good so to truly test a fragrance you really need to spray it on your skin and give it time to you know, uh, most things, fragrance reacts to heat, so it will change over time. Um, fragrances have usually, um, well, they do have three levels of notes in them. So you're going to have top notes, middle notes, and base notes. Um, the top notes are known to kind of usually fade a little bit faster than the base notes. Um, but you always want to have a fragrance that's nicely balanced or else you'll get something that's like too sour or like super super vanilla with no like relief from the sugariness like everything about fragrances is about balance that's also why I want to make a uh because someone actually asked uh I love making cocktails and mocktails um and those are a lot about balance it's about finding the right balance of like your acid because usually you're going to want to have like a citrus in there uh your hard liquor and then um, simple syrup, sugar. Uh, and I feel like getting into fragrances has made me better at making cocktails because I often think about cocktails in terms of like the way you would a fragrance. So in levels and like, what are you going to do to fill out the mid notes? And then underneath, where was I? Anyway, yeah. So usually in a fragrance, you're going to have top notes, middle notes, and base notes. Your top notes are usually going to be zingier. Um, so you're looking at, or lighter in general. So top notes usually are like the citrusy, kind of biting, um, fresh smells. Uh, and those kind of dissipate the longer it's on you. And usually over a couple hours, you're going to smell more of the bottom notes because they tend to hang on a little bit better. This all gets into like, I love smells. Um, also, it gets into, I, I love weed. We all know it. Um, but uh, it all, those two interests relate because this is the coolest thing about all this. And everything is connected. The more you learn about one thing, the more you learn about everything. But so this summer, I had the chance to work with um, some people on a weed farm, uh, which was amazing. Uh, they grow organic weed, and I wanted to learn more about their processes and how they maintain an organic farm, and I'm so excited to go back this summer. But um, a big thing about weed is the terpenes, which is usually kind of the scent profile, the flavor profile of um, any given strain of weed. Terpenes, I learned this, are common. Terpenes are the scent molecules of pretty much all natural things. So when you are smelling like rose, it's because you're smelling geraniol, which is a terpene, which can be present as well in weed. So when you smell like something that smells kind of rosy and weed, I don't know if you have, um, but this farm that I helped with, they, especially this year, they're doing a bunch of really fun fruity varieties. This will all connect in the end. They're doing a bunch of fun, really fruity varieties and um, these like sativa dominant, like fruity, fresh, citrus type flavor profiles of terpenes, 
the first thing to go when you're storing the weed um, over time, even if you've cured it the best you could and you're really storing it well, is these terpenes that are a little bit lighter. Um, so like citrus degrades really fast. Um, uh, geraniol, I've, I've not, I haven't yet uh, encountered, well, actually I do, I have a peach. Um, but anyway, uh, so that these terpenes all degrade at different um, at a different speed and the slowest one to break down is kind of the skunky terpene I don't know what the name is but that's kind of why when people think of marijuana they are thinking of mostly kind of skunky smells because most people are smoking bad weed and I personally think that <laughs> these people at this organic farm grow the best weed on earth um but it because it's old um and if you get anything that smells like gassy you know how uh, I've never said that gas as uh in, in relation to weed before but um that is like one of the last terpenes to go before something gets too old so people are so familiar with a skunky kind of like strong smelling weed when really there are so many different strains and some of them literally smell like tangerines like I it was incredible helping out on this farm because I'm just like really big on smells and everything and so going around and smelling everything but anyway different terpenes and this is assuming that your fragrance is totally natural which it's most likely not but different terpenes degrade at different speeds so it actually does kind of relate to fragrances where sometimes like the higher notes the citrusy the fruity those will dissipate over time and you'll be left with the base notes which if you're going with like a french perfume could be a little bit kind of funky um but with most, it'll probably be like a vanilla or an amber or that kind of base note. Natural perfumes are made usually from essential oils and then alcohol. And the essential oils are terpenes. So terpenes are present in almost every kind of natural thing. Um, but then some of the big ones, um, my personal favorite, uh, uh, pinene, which is most likely, I'm pretty sure, is, is pinene in pine needles. So instead of thinking of things as having like their own really specific scent, it seems to me, at least from my like research that I've just done on the internet, that um, there are actually terpenes that are common between plants that are present in several different areas. So like pinene, which you can have in a weed, my personal favorite, I love a good piney, woody type of uh weed um pinene is also in pine needles that's why pine needles smell the way they do um limonene which is also found in citruses is the citrus note that's in uh marijuana um i wonder if this whole video is gonna get demonetized i hope not i'm just talking about terpenes and just so you know more um linalool uh i think that's how you say it um is reminiscent of lavender, found in weed, also found in lavender. Um, myrcene, myr myrcene, I think it is. Um, I believe myrcene is what's in hops. Um, and so if you smell weed and you're like, it smells like an IPA, that's because it's got myrcene in it. I believe that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, myrcene is in hops. So there's a little overview on the natural fragrance world and like where we're getting these essential oils from the other cool thing about these different terpenes is that terpenes do have benefits uh especially in you know marijuana like limonene is great for nausea um usually like the earthier uh kind of limonene bright stuff is really good for nausea um the linalool lavender just as you would assume is better for relaxation and all that stuff it's very cool. I'm very interested in all of it because um, I love smells and uh, it's just cool how things are actually more connected than you would think. But I've gotten way off. Didn't I tell you at the start? This is going to take me a while. But anyway, um, but most of the time the fragrances that you're purchasing from Sephora and Ulta and stuff are not made from real essential oils. Um, but that's kind of what perfume started as. This is also important, uh, storing your fragrances. I know a lot of people like to store them in their bathroom because they just put a spritz on after they are done showering or whatever, but um, warmth, 
light uh, humidity all will degrade your fragrances. They'll start to smell. They'll have like a sharper alcohol note. Um, and it just smells like you put a bunch of, you soaked a thrift store sweater in rubbing alcohol and you added quite a bit of that to your perfume. That's when it's off. That's kind of the smell that it has. Um, sometimes people cannot smell that fragrances are off. That's another job I want to have. Going through people's testers, you wouldn't believe how many times I've taken a tester off and just sprayed some on my skin, trusting that it is fresh and it will smell good, and it doesn't. I don't know how they're letting these things get through the cracks, especially at nice department stores. You should be binning your fragrances as soon as they start to smell like thrift store. I don't get it, but anyway... Keep them in the dark, keep them cool, and then you'll be able to keep them for far longer than they probably tell you. As far as fragrance placement, um, I like going by just using pulse points. So these are where like heat kind of emanates from it. So this to me is better than the spritz and walkthrough approach. I think that is a garbage approach to... Um, I think it's a garbage approach to wearing perfume I don't think it's good it stuff smells weird on your clothes smells different um ideally you want it on your skin and I think this is nicer because then it's not this constant cloud of perfume because it's on pulse points it's like if you move your hair a certain way or something then someone might get like a whiff of what you're wearing but you don't announce yourself with it um so um kind of behind your pulse point you have a bunch of them but um like behind your ears um on your elbows, wrists, behind your knees, ankles. I think that's it. I think that's it. Um, but usually you don't need very much. It always depends on the strength of the fragrance. But usually a couple spritzes, choose like one or two pulse points, will probably do it. Um, if you want to be a little more reserved. Some people like to really go all out and spray a lot. Um you don't want to rub the fragrance. I know sometimes people will spray and then like really rub. That's no good. Uh, you might be kind of bruising the fragrance. Usually just like they say to put one spritz on each side. You don't have to do that. You can just transfer it by kind of patting. Um, but there's no need to rub because that's going to... The reason why, um, when people say that to you, you're like, that sounds like bullshit, uh, bruising the fragrance. But I think my personal opinion is probably that you're introducing a whole bunch more heat than it needs to have initially. So when you're rubbing, um, it'll degrade some of the notes. So you're supposed to just spritz or just tap kind of. I watched a documentary on perfume making a couple of years ago and the biggest thing that stuck with me from it was that most designer fragrances cost more to design the bottle and produce the bottle than the money that they spend on the liquid that's actually inside which is neither here nor there because I've had great fragrances with crazy bottles and then I've also had good fragrances in very plain bottles but it's just something to think about and perfume is by nature an overpriced product. I mean, really like spending, when does it make sense to spend like 120 bucks on an ounce of liquid? Only in perfume. But I'm a fiend, so I don't care. So my last little bit as far as just information on fragrances is that I would suggest getting out of Sephora and Ulta and maybe trying uh, your local department stores uh, like a Nordstrom or a Bloomingdale's or Saks Fifth Ave, or usually these, if, here's the thing though, I believe in Bloomingdale's, I think that they work on commission, and I understand, you're working on commission, you're trying to make a buck, but most of the time, what I'd like to do is I want to go into the department store and be left the fuck alone so I can go around and sniff, 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 and then find the thing for me. I don't need your help, and it seems like in Bloomingdale's, you'll be like, thanks, I don't need your help. And they'll still hover around you. And it drives me nuts. And then I end up leaving because then I don't like, I can't relax and smell my perfumes. And like, anyway, but I don't believe all department stores work on commission. So I would actually seek out ones that don't. Uh, so you're not bugged so much while you look for your perfume. I think it's really fun to, well, okay. So, and also these department stores very often have a larger range of fragrances. Sephora and Ulta are only 
like really carrying like the best sellers from brands, um, which can be great, but also can be boring. Um, and I think that a lot of the brands they carry have better fragrances that they're not carrying just because they're a little more niche. Um, and yeah, I think that's the factual side of this video over. The rest of this is my opinion. Um, but I do have opinions on fragrance and just stuff in general. So we're done with the facts. Now I'm going to give you my opinions and I'm going to get on my soapbox a little bit. Um, I think that there are some fragrance houses that are really trying, are really putting their back into it, are really making fun, beautiful fragrances. And I think some people are phoning it in just because they can. Not every luxury brand needs to have a fragrance arm, and yet they do. Every single one does, and not everyone does it well, personally, in my opinion. My, like, I think most underwhelming fragrance arm of a designer brand, I think that I, just in general, because um, I've smelled a few of their perfumes, I think Burberry makes the most boring fucking perfumes I've ever smelled in my life. I think they're overpriced for what they are. They smell like body sprays. It's all my opinion. Then on the other side of things, there are brands like Hermes, which I think does great with their fragrances. I also think that they're underappreciated and they don't carry some of the best ones in Sephora. Um, uh, oh, and also like... Um, I think Pro I love Prada. I think that they really seem to have like a robust fragrance arm of their, um, of that kind of designer. Um, also, here's the thing. You know how they'll, there are designer brands, the name of the designer, but then with each collection or usually there's one person in charge. But for like the most known one, Chanel, um, was operating under Karl Lagerfeld for a while. And with that, um, fragrances come from fragrance houses, but they're designed by noses. So you may find that there's a no, that's what they're called, they're noses. Um, so maybe you find a designer you really love, but they're hopping around to different brands or something. Um, so for me to say like Burberry sucks is not really fair because maybe it's just like the designer, the nose that they currently have that I don't like. But I just, I think they suck. I don't like the fragrances. Um, but yeah, I just say that to say that like not every luxury brand is worth its weight in, you know, the whole perfume space. Sometimes they're just doing it because that's what you do. You have a perfume line. Um, and I would just like to help you avoid buying that stuff. Um, okay, so I'm now going to show you my, some of my favorite fragrances, um, I'll start with, I'll end with my most complimented one uh, that's $19 and is technically a room spray, um, but the rest of these are in no specific order. Um, but I just wanted to say, first off, a really great way to make your fragrance last for longer is to moisturize first. Uh, I think this is because the alcohol kind of like um, gets on hangs on to the like the fattier more lipid kind of things that are on your skin as opposed to like dry um you can either do this with an unscented lotion or if you want to do it with a scented lotion this is I usually use like a not an unscented but just n n not like a super fragrance forward lotion I, t I told you the one that I use it's the embryoless one that one has like a light floral smell to it but it's really not that strong this if I'm feeling fancy uh, Persian Garden. It just smells like an amber kind of thing. I also have their Persian Garden in uh, a fragrance oil and um, I have a couple other fragrance oils from them. I'm, I don't really give any of them like my full um, recommendation, but except for the Persian Garden. I just really like it. It's just amber, but um, it's good. So the first fragrance I have to show you guys is in a beautiful bottle, but I don't care. I think it's tastefully done. Um, and it's lighter. I don't know what it actually, it's an eau de toilette. So it's not like a cologne, although it really does have, it doesn't last very long. So it's more like a cologne. Uh, but this is the Guerlain, Guerlain, Guerlain. I fucking hate this. I sound like an idiot. 
the aqua allegoria herba fresca which is essentially it's very green i like green scents especially in the summer um uh this one's really nice it's so refreshing uh it's the top notes are lemon and clover the middle notes mint and green tea and the base notes are lily of the valley and cyclamen i think that's how you say it and it just it really has a green tea scent to it it's just like a mint citrus green tea um really fresh like not overbearing in any way fragrance and it's very nice this one is almost more like i would spritz it on as like a temporary thing is like a pick-me-up because it really doesn't last that long um but yeah i love actually the bottles for these it's got a little b on the top um but yeah, that's a lighter fragrance that I really love for summertime. Um, I also, when it comes to layering, I like using different forms of perfume. So I do like fragrance oils, but not like the expensive kind. Um, this I just got the other day, but I love the smell of jasmine. And this is a, a jasmine essential, not a, a essential oil. It's a jasmine perfume oil. And I think it would really layer well with some of the other things I have. Um, but, uh, and then I also mentioned this in my other video, which is the Demeter Linden spray and Linden is lime blossom and I'm almost done with it. Um, and I'm definitely going to order more. I'm going to make an order from Demeter at some point and get quite a few things because they have some really fun fragrances and, I just want to try layering them. Um, I'll show you some of my heavier ones next, kind of more winter ones that I don't honestly wear that often. Um, this one, I like Jasmine. This is Jasmine Noir by Bulgari, and it's it's so good. It's just like, it's sweet, it's white floral, it's warm, very much a little bit spicy, very good for winter time. But this is an Eau de Parfum, and it... Uh, it really sticks around so you only need like one spray of this and you'll smell the whole night um and then i also have this other winter one which is coco chanel i mean uh, uh yeah coco eau de toilette um by chanel and this just reminds me a lot of my mother she chanel is her thing um she loves chanel fragrances and i do i do sometimes feel like i'm not grown enough to wear chanel fragrances to me they smell like very adult um but i will say this one especially but it smells nostalgic like it just smells like new york or like going out to dinner with my parents when i was like seven because my mom in the winter because my mom would wear this but especially with like these heavier ones from chanel um the more classic heavier ones not their new ones that smell a bit kind of older or like uh like your mother would um I would give them a try, do a little spritz, and then just like do it hours ahead of wherever you're going because I find that this initially it's very spicy, it's very like kind of older womanish, but the as it sits on my skin, it really chills out a little bit. It becomes more of like a warm amber fragrance as opposed to the super spicy kind of thing. So fragrant fragrances change over time on your skin, so it's always good to like give yourself a spritz and then see how it smells several hours later. Um, but yeah, this is another one where they're like, you only need a teeny, teeny, tiny bit. It's so strong. Um, um, this is a really nice affordable summer fragrance. It's the fresh grapefruit eau de parfum. Um, it just, it's just super citrusy, like sweet satsuma and it, it's a real pick me up. I uh, I really like this one, and clearly I've used quite a bit of it. Um, so to find a fragrance that you like, I think your best bet first is going to a department store and smelling things on yourself. Maybe going around. I would first do a precursory um, like spray with the the paper things. Go around and then be like, which ones do I like that? And then once you find your favorites of those, I would then spray it on your skin see how it smells and then if you really like it usually you can just ask hey can I get a tester of that try it for a couple more days see how it kind of dries down see how you like it and then 
purchase a fragrance. I think that we all should take a little more time with purchasing our fragrances if we want to. I think it should be an opportunity to really get something that you really love and that is personal to you because everyone has different notes that they really love. This next perfume is one of my favorites that I've ever bought and it's because it feels so personal and it's the time that I bought it. Um, but uh, we... So our land... <laughs> This is all I talk. If someone wanted to make fun of me, they'd be able to do it so easily. I'm sometimes, I hang out on, I don't hang out. Sometimes I am a little bit of like a light reader of uh, Reddit snark forums. And I know that if they ever got a hold of me, they'd be like, this bitch does not stop talking about Maine. And she copies Lana Del Rey. <laughs> that would be the only thing. Um, but anyway, so this fragrance I got last summer. I'm obsessed with it because on our land in Maine, we have a fuck ton of juniper. We actually call it Juniper Hill. That's like what we call it. Um, but there's a ton of juniper and it smells so good and green when you crush the berries in your hand, especially when they're newer. They're not like super spicy and dark yet. They're green and they just like, ugh, it smells so good. It smells like cedar up there. Anyway, I purchased this last summer. And this is an Hermes fragrance. I think that they do fragrances so well. I love this collection. It's inspired by different gardens around the world. This one is their Mediterranean one. Um, and the reason why it just like really struck me, and I think this was, might have been a blind buy. I'm not sure. I just saw the notes and I was like, yep, I want it. it that sounds amazing. Um, so the top notes are bergamot, lemon, and mandarin orange. Again, Usually top notes are kind of citrusy. Um, the middle notes are orange blossom. I fucking love orange blossom. I love it so much. I put it in cocktails too. It's really good in cocktails. Um, white narium. I don't know that. And then oleander, which I've heard of before. Then the base notes are fig leaf, love, cypress, love, red cedar, juniper. Red cedar and juniper we both have on the land so it just felt very nostalgic and pistachio and then musk to kind of ground it um but this is another unisex one i think yeah it smells so good it kind of smells like the forest but it's kind of sweet and it's got a little bit of citrus and i think that it, this is definitely like one of my signature kind of scents i'm obsessed with it and i just think they do a really good job and uh Sephora really only carries one or two of their fragrances, Hermes, um, and I, they have a lot, and I think they do them really well. Um, this one is a little bit more of a niche fragrance. This is from Imaginary Authors. Um, again, it's fig. I love fig fragrances. I think my one of my favorite of all time. I like this one better because it's got the juniper in it, um, but I love the Coconut and Philosokos by Diptyque. They have a really nice free they have a really nice fig fragrance and it has like fresh kind of creamy green coconut in it as well. And it smells so good. Um, and I need to get a bottle. Um, I had a little bottle of it, but I lost it. I don't know where the fuck it went. Um, but anyway, this is from a smaller brand called the, uh, called Imaginary Authors. Um, and I ordered a bunch of testers from them a little while ago. And this one really struck me because it's fig. And I guess I just figured out about a year ago that I'm like nuts over fig. But um, this one has fig and iris, which is kind of like a white orange, uh, like a white purple flower. So imagine like a mix between white flowers and then like a lilac wisteria kind of thing. Um, cream, which I love. I love like milky skin scents. Um, tonka, which is kind of a vanilla tree bark, which is just woody stuff. Walnut bitters and orchard dust. No idea what orchard dust is. I think it's really funny when people get a little bit like creative with their notes and they're like totally imaginary notes. I don't fucking think that's helpful ever. Um, I like to get the real notes, but this doesn't, it's just the orchard dust. I don't know what that means, but, um, the rest of it's but anyway, this one is a little more of like a wintry fig fragrance. It leans warmer and it leans sweeter than the other one and Philosokos, but it's great for a wintertime fragrance. Um, I would say that like these two and the next one uh, are like my most worn. This next one, I think Prada does an excellent job on their fragrances. And yet 
only like one or two are carried. I'm thinking of Prada Candy, which is like a caramel vanilla scent, which is fine. Um, but I they do a lot of other scents so well. And this one is also just really generally palatable. I don't see why it wouldn't be at like a big uh, cosmetic store because I think it would sell well. But um, I smelled this for the first time in a Prada store in Short Hills <laughs> in uh, Jersey. And it was so good. I spritzed some on my wrist and I just like couldn't stop smelling it. And then I found some on eBay and I got it. And it is very feminine, but I'll tell you the notes. I'm also going to link the Fragrantica pages to each of these fragrances um, because I don't know the best place to buy them, but then you can read about them and then from there figure out where you want to buy it. Um, But anyway, this... um, This Prada fragrance I'm obsessed with. I think it's just really lovely and feminine and like kind of light, but also not too light. The top notes are frangipani and mandarin orange, which probably accounts for a lot of the sweetness. Frangipani, as far as I've seen, is a pretty like sweet flower note. Um, The middle notes are tuberose and lang lang, which tuberose and white florals always remind me of it's like florals with like like a tiny bit of a funk like you would assume like a lilac would have or does jasmine jasmine doesn't really have a bit of a funk but lilac kind of has a bit of a funk to it um but tuberose and ylang lang i don't know if it's lang lang or ylang lang no idea and then um uh base notes of kind of just woody stuff so nice it's sweet it's feminine it's fairly light it's not like a sweet that like sticks to you it's a gentle sweet fragrance but I'm obsessed with it I've gone through more than half the bottle um and then my very last uh thing is my most when whenever I go to the airport and I go to clear well not every single time but it's happened a couple times now and I go go into the airport and I go up to clear and I show them my my uh, boarding pass or whatever. And a couple times they have complimented me on how I smell. And it's always when I'm wearing this. This is a room spray, but it's so good. So uh, this is by Merci, uh, but not spelled like thank you. It's M-E-R and then like C, like the ocean, S-E-A. It's called Coconut Sugar. uh, And it's literally coconut, vanilla, and amber. But it's such a good vanilla and amber. It doesn't like dry down like French vanilla y uh, or sharp in any way. And it's kind of got a bit of an oily consistency. I wonder if that's because it's a room spray. So I would be careful about spraying it on your clothes. Like don't spray it too close. The way I like to use this is I'll spray it on my hands and because it is a little bit oily, I'll run it through my hair and then it helps with some flyaways and it just smells really good. Um, but this is on Amazon for like 19 bucks and it's great just in general if you just want like a plain vanilla warm nice smelling fragrance for every day I've gone through at least two bottles of this it's really good and people always compliment me it's always so funny what people compliment but vanilla like when it's a nice vanilla most people are gonna be like "Mm, smells good um but yeah this coconut sugar so nice and I wear it all the time I put it in my hair um but yeah those are all my favorite fragrances all my opinions on fragrances all the information I know about fragrances um yeah uh thanks for watching my videos guys uh I know that I disappeared kind of for a little while I'm really enjoying reading the comments and it uh I always do think a little bit before I hit upload, like, is this annoying? Like, is, are people not going to enjoy this? And so when people do, it sure is nice. Um, I think that's the end of my video for today. Um, thanks for hanging out. What's, I have a whole list of videos that I want to make. Um, I think the next one I will be recording my favorite podcasts because I listen to a lot of podcasts because I cannot be left alone with my thoughts ever. So I have a lot of podcasts that I like. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye.